Kutsi is a South African para athlete born blind as a result of a hereditary condition called liver congenital amaurosis. She competes in the T11 disability class for athletes with highest level of visual impairment. In 2017, Kutsi broke the 5,000 meter women's world record in a disability class, while in April 2018, she became the first visually impaired athlete to compete at the World University Cross Country Championship in Switzerland. In 2021, Kutsi competed at the 2020 Tokyo Paralympics, winning the silver medal in the 1500 meter final in a new African record of 4.40.96 and the bronze medal in the T12 women's marathon in a new T11 world record time of 3.11.13. She joins us now to talk about preparations for the World Championships later in the year. Rizan, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, um, and uh, for talking to us. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's such a privilege to be on. Thank you so much. Now, so much. let's just take it a little bit back. When did you realize as an athlete that you were talented as far as running is concerned? Wow, I would like, I literally, I only started running in my first year as a student at the University of the Free State. And I think I literally realized when I, um, you know, I competed and I, I just ran like as a coping mechanism while I was a student. And then I qualified for my first world championships the second year after I started running. So that was really like a big moment for me realizing, you know, that I could do this. And it was something that I never used to plan for in my tra trajectory of like where I thought my life was going. So athletics like literally found me. I I never knew that I was going to be a, like an an athlete at all. But t talk 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 to us just about your typical day as an athlete, as okay. a as a professional athlete for that matter. So I normally have two training sessions, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, and then. The one in the morning would mostly like be like a lighter session where I do either some conditioning gym work or I do like a light shorter run. And the afternoon would then be either a longer like recovery run or it would be a train, a gym session. So I have gym sessions three times a week and then the other two days, Monday to Friday, I do shorter sessions and then in the mornings and then the other, on Saturday, I do a long run. So that's that's basically what my typical training day would look like. And and what sort of challenges do you face on a daily basis as an athlete? I mean, despite of course being blind. Mm -hmm. I think for me, a challenge is always you know the fact that I cannot train alone. So being blind means that I, in essence, athletics becomes like a team sport for me because I have to train with somebody all the time and I have to be with somebody when I train. So for me, um, fortunately, I have two wonderful guides. Um, Mr. Istian Bordenos, who does my track running with me, and then Mr. Klaus Kempen, who does my marathon running. Um, I think also, you know, getting the right nutrition, getting the right supplements in, you really need to stay focused in terms of what you put back into your body to recover. So I wouldn't say it's a challenge, but it's something that you have to focus on as an athlete. And then obviously, I think a lot of, we, we all know, I think the economy is pressing. So finances are obviously also a big issue. Um, for athletes, but fortunately, we also have great, wonderful partners who assist us with that um, where, where they can. I mean, talk, talk to me about that. Uh, that was going to be my next question in terms of financial support mm -hmm. and otherwise. Uh, how yeah. much of a role does that play? And do you feel that as uh, para-athletes, you do get that support financially and otherwise? So obviously, I think it plays a big role because if you don't have funding, you can't get your proper nutrition in. You can't go to camps and competitions. You can't do the things that you need to do for your sport and to, and to ensure that you're the fittest and the best that you can be. Um, fortunately, like there are a lot of companies, you know, that step up to the plate. Um, and I think that, you know, with the government having launched OPEX, um, that will also assist greatly. And then there's a wonderful sports platform that actually started after the 2021 games. Well, I think they obviously started a little bit before then, but um, I got involved with them after the Tokyo games, and that's Match Kit. So Match Kit is a, it's a crowdfunding platform specifically for sports people. And what I love about Match Kit is it allows you to be – to know who sponsors you. So that helps because you can add a personal touch, you know, to thank your people and to ensure that they, you know, also get the recognition they deserve. And it allows you to partner with companies that then can support you and you can recognize them and also play an active role for them 
you know, in your journey. So that's what's wonderful about Match Kit. And they really equip you with skills that you would need in terms of how to create your own funding platforms, what to do. They educate you around how to build your own brand, which is wonderful because I think all sports people, obviously, we are all different brands, you know. So your sport and your individual personality is your brand, and they really concentrate on building that brand for you and uh, helping you to build it. Would you say that, <laughs> that that project, if I can call it that, or program, yeah. helps you to manage financially in terms of uh, preparations, particularly for international competitions? I think it definitely does because um, it allows you to, um, you know, through your social media to let people know what you are doing. And people then can, then can get involved in a way that um, is sort of transparent. So you can, people can see what, what you have and you can, you can give feedback, you know, in terms of what you've done. The page, uh, the match kit profile also allows you, you know, to put it on a budget so that people can see exactly what is necessary. So it really helps. And I think it's a very transparent, cool way for companies and individuals to get involved with athletes. I think you answered my next question. I was going to ask about <laughs> social media. And, and I'll say that uh, what role do you think it plays in, in that, uh, you know, in helping athletes and para athletes like yourself? Look, social media is the way that you communicate with the public on a daily or on a weekly basis. So I think it plays a big role, especially for people who follow and who want to see what's happening in your career. And obviously for for companies, you know, that's also important because your presence is going to sort of, you're going to become like a, not an influencer per se, but I mean, you're going to be the one putting out their brand into the world as well and supporting them. And when they support you and you support them, I mean, that's a wonderful place to be in and a wonderful partnership to have. It's, it's a, a world, champions, uh, world championship year. How has it been for you yes. in terms of preparations? It's wonderful. Um, <laughs> um, it's been tough in the sense that, you know, when you, when you train for something like this, it's, the training is hard. But we are, I think we are in a good space. I'm healthy. Um, so I think we are really in a, in a very good space. Um, it's getting cold in South Africa now, and especially in Bloom. We've had a hectic week in, in terms of temperatures. Things have been like, you know, the maximums have been around 10 degrees Celsius, and the, 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 the lows have been around minuses. So I think the, the weather is starting to play a role. But I think, you know, we just plan around it and train midday, and we, we make a plan. Um, but I think things are going well. I had a good national championships in March this year. And I'm really looking forward to going to, to the World Champs this year. And, and I mean, w with the experience that you've amassed, uh, um, you know, in previous competitions, and I mean, not just mm -hmm. experience, uh, notching up good results, uh, getting a medal uh, in the Olympics, setting world records, how much of a role in, in building your confidence does that play ahead of the World mm -hmm. Champs? I think it's kind of twofold. I think I am a little bit more nervous now that I have medaled. Because, you know, you would really like to do that again and you would like to, to represent South Africa on that stage and in that manner again. I think that has motivated me a lot, but it's also there is some added pressure, you know, in terms of you, you really want to do well um, to make South Africa proud and to improve on your own self. Because if you medal again and it's a, it's a better time, then you've improved on yourself. And I think... For me, that's a big part of sport is the fact that it allows you to to improve on your own times and your own distances, and it allows you to improve as an individual. And, and what are your personal targets for the World Champs? I would say to run a PB. Um, so I would like to run a faster time than in Tokyo. So I really hope that that would be possible. And um, we will see where that faster time leads us in terms of place. I can't, obviously, you know sports, so you know yeah. it's very difficult. You can't guarantee anything. But um, I think we will set out to run a faster time than in Tokyo. We will try our best. Any, any, any major competitions between now and then that you are eyeing? No. So we already flying out in three weeks' time. Um, and, you know, so there's no real comps before then. After that, there's a few things happening. I might go do the Soweto, um, but not the full marathon this year. I did the full marathon last year. Um, I might, I will definitely be at the Spa Ladies Joburg edition. So that's something to look out for. 
Um, yeah, so there's a few things after that, but the most serious of all is the World Champs this year. Luzanne, thank you so much uh, for taking time to speak to us. The best of luck uh, in the World Champs.